Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our synodical president, Pastor Matthew Harrison, he likes to tell the following story. He says, Not long ago, my wife and I returned to her hometown, and we stopped at one of the local gas stations. As I filled the tank, I noticed that she spent a long time speaking with one of the attendants. When she finally returned to the car, I asked her, Who was that that you were talking to? Well, she replied that it was an old high school flame. Oh, really? I exclaimed. And he's a gas station attendant. Ha! I bet I know what you're thinking. And with a very serious tone, she responded, Yeah, if I'd married him, he'd be president of the Missouri Synod. <laughs> well, the joke is funny, but it has a very profound point. Our wives make us men far better than we would have been otherwise. Salted for service. The LWML does the same thing for the Missouri Synod. Now, as we get started, let me make this perfectly clear. Today's sermon is not just an obligatory tip of the hat to the ladies of the LWML because today is LWML Sunday. The mission of the LWML gets to the very heart of who we are as Christians and what we are to be doing as the church. Though not all of you here today are members of the LWML, every one of you needs to hear and know and believe what I'm going to tell you this morning. Otherwise, you will muddle pointlessly through life, and worse, you may miss heaven altogether. So what is it about salt? Jesus makes us Christians salty. And he has salted us to season everything around us. When Jesus says, if salt has lost its saltiness, how will you make it salty again? What he is saying is that salt cannot be anything but salty. There is no such thing as unsalty salt. Christians are salty, and we're salted specifically for service. Jesus died to put your sins to death. He died on a cross 8,000 miles away and 2,000 years ago. It is a done deal. Jesus said, it is finished. There is nothing that you or anyone else on earth can or needs to do in order to gain God's favor. What he won so long ago, he now gives out. He claimed you in holy baptism and made his cross, death, and resurrection yours. Your sins are eternally washed away. But to what end? Luther's Catechism says that Jesus did all this so that I may be his own, to live under him in his kingdom, and to serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. And so what does the Bible say about salt? Well, salt adds flavor. We know that. It seasons food, of course, but salt also heals. Salt preserves. Salt purified the sacrifices of the Old Testament, and it indicated peace with God. It indicated kinship and peace between two parties. And so Jesus adds at the very end of our Gospel reading for today, be at peace with one another. Today we are not forgiven we are not salted by Christ so that we can live in our sin and long for it, though we all do. We are salted to look forward. We are salted to serve. At the time of Luther, it was thought that the church was all about giving to God our works and praise in order to earn heaven. That was the law. 
In those days, it was believed that the greatest Christians were those who separated themselves from the rest of the world in monasteries, separated themselves from people and devoted their entire lives to God. Church was all about performing the sacrifice of the Mass in order to try and earn points in getting to heaven. But Luther, he turned the whole paradigm on its head. Church is first and foremost about God serving us. We are the tax collector standing far off and crying out, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God is the one who is doing something for us. Jesus said, I came not to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. In Luther's Ten Commandments hymn, says about the third commandment on worship, and put aside the work you do so that God may work in you. Luther also frequently said, God does not need your good works, but your neighbor does. So we are served by God through His blessed Word and sacraments. We are salted in order to turn to our neighbor in love and serve him or her. You and I, we are salted for service. And this is precisely what we learn from the women of the Bible and from the LWML today. The LWML is salted for the service of bearing witness to Jesus Christ. The LWML is precisely Lutheran women in mission. The LWML exists to witness to Christ. If you remember, in John 4, it tells the story of the Samaritan woman at the well. And Jesus says to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked Him, and He would have given you living water. Give me this water, the woman replied. But Christ then confronted her about her numerous husband and her living, her current living, live-in boyfriend. Jesus called her to repentance and faith. And in fact, she believed. And after Jesus had salted her, what did she do? Do you remember? John says, the woman left her water jug and went away into town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? And then later on in the text, we learn that many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's witness. The church bears witness to Jesus. The real art of reading the Bible is seeing ourselves in all of its characters. Sinners, saints, the good, the bad, the ugly. And often all these terms apply to one and the same person. Just like you and me. You are the woman at the well. You are the one whose life does not square up with the holy law of God. You are the one who deserves hell. But you are also the one to whom Jesus calls to repentance. You are the one who is forgiven. And you are the one who now bears witness to Jesus Christ. You are salted to serve no matter who you are. But where is that service to take place? The work of the LWML shows us exactly where. Your witness takes place first, right where God has placed you. First and foremost, it happens in your family. You are the witness to your children. You are the witness to your grandchildren. You are the witness to your brothers and sisters to your aunts and uncles and cousins. You are the witness to your parents. 
And that's why the LWML provides so many resources and Bible studies to strengthen our women in faith. And from there, your witness is your circle of friends. This congregation and our community, just like the Samaritan woman. Through the mites, hundreds upon hundreds of projects in our districts, in our synod, and in our partner churches all around the world have been funded by the gospel of free forgiveness in Jesus. It has been funded by the mites of the LWML so that Jesus is known around the world. This has amounted to literally millions upon millions of dollars. And in fact, the worldwide witness of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod would be severely hindered without the LWML. That's a simple fact. Countless thousands know of Jesus because of the work of the LWML. And just like the LWML, you and I too, we have been salted for service of being missionaries for Jesus Christ. The women of the LWML are also salted for the service of being missionaries of mercy. Remember now the Canaanite woman. She cried out to Jesus saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. Well, surprisingly, Jesus puts her off. Jesus says, It's not right to take the children's bread and feed it to the dogs. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman never gave up. She responded, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Jesus came to have mercy, and to have mercy both on body and soul. Jesus cared for people in need over and over and over again. The New Testament teaches repeatedly that the church is now to care for the needy in its midst and also to reach out in the community whose physical needs are not met. This is St. Paul's teaching in 1 Corinthians. It is St. John's teaching in 1 John. It is the teaching of the book of Acts in chapter 6. It is Martin Luther's teaching. It is also the teaching of Dr. Walther, our synodical founder. And it is the regular practice of our LWML. President Harrison tells another story about seeing the work of the LWML all around the world. He says, Over the past decade, I have visited dozens of places in the world and had a recurring experience, like I did, for example, in Abur, India. There I was touring a large and bustling Lutheran hospital compound. Hundreds of people are treated there each day. Babies are born. People are cared for by pastors, deaconesses, doctors, and nurses. And as I rounded a corner on the walk, I came face to face with something very profound. A plaque on the hospital building stated, built with assistance of funds from the Lutheran Women's Missionary League. Every time this occurs, I think of all the women that I've met over the years. I think of all those faithfully filled mite boxes. I think especially of the women who are now with the Lord, and I am profoundly grateful. It would literally take all day to tell you about the current LWML projects around our district, the United States, and the world that are caring for the poorest of women and children, fighting malaria and other diseases, assisting the addicted, providing care for unwed mothers, and supporting crisis pregnancy centers. The list could be multiplied on and on and on. And in all of these instances, the name of Jesus Christ is being shared. And so like the LWML, you and I, we too, are salted for service of being missionaries of mercy. 
Finally, the LWML is salted for service in our life together here in the church. Don't you find it interesting that Jesus says in our text, have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Being salty brings with it a life together in the church. St. John wrote, That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. John's witness to Jesus created faith, fellowship, and joy. As the LWML bears witness to Jesus, precisely the same thing happens here. Our life together is deepened. The LWML helps us share each other's burdens. It strengthens our fellowship, our life together in Jesus Christ. That fellowship, where we share faith, hope, and love, it continues to grow. And finally, there is joy. A joy especially in our service. The LWML is an example for all of us. We are salted to serve. And how do we serve? Forgiven by Jesus, we bear witness to Him in our daily lives. We care for those in need, just like He did. And we live a life together of love and forgiveness. And in all this service, through every joy and sorrow shared, there is joy. May God bless all the women of the LWML and the entire church on earth with such salty service. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.